Hey, baby. Mommy's been having contractions five minutes apart for about an hour. It's five o'clock in the morning. And he's breaking the law. <laughs> and I'm breaking the law. <laughs> Going fast, taking a video. What do you think, Mama? It hurts. <laughs> All right. We're going to meet you soon. We're going to meet you soon, baby. Hey, guys. What is up? I have been wanting to film this video for a very long time, and the only reason why I've been wanting to film it so badly is because whenever I was pregnant with my first daughter, Gracie, so this would have been 2014, 2015, she was born in December, so it would have been all of 2015. Um, we did nothing but YouTube videos on all natural birth and giving birth and how to do it and what we should do. and just how to go into labor when it got closer to time and just preparing our minds and ourselves for what was about to happen, it being our first kid. So I wanted to give a video for moms to watch or expecting moms to watch to get themselves ready for birth or what my experience was like and just some helpful tips that I got that actually worked and that I would re-give. So I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible just to get to the point on everything. And yeah, so let's just get right into it. First daughter, Gracely, I was, um, her due date was December 10th. And on December 11th, my husband and I went out to eat to a place called Causes. And it's just like a pizza joint, but it has a bunch of other food also. So we got a pizza. I ordered um, pub breadstick, like uh, pretzel, pub pretzel breadsticks with cheese. And he got like wings or something and we just started like, I mean, I chowed down. And we always made the comment that we didn't want to, I didn't want to eat a bunch of just junk and a bunch of like corn and stuff because you know what happens when you give birth? Of course, I pig out not thinking that I was ever going to go into labor, that I was going to have to be induced and I was just, I did not want to be induced at all. I was waiting for the very last minute. I did not want that to happen. My doctor, I fully trusted. Um, he said that it wasn't, you know, he, he didn't have to strip my membranes or anything, uh, which I was terrified he was going to have to do. And so that night we went home and we relaxed, we, um, colored penciled, uh, man mandalas, uh, you know, like adult coloring books and just relaxed and, uh, listened to Zen music. <laughs> went to bed and at four o'clock in the morning, I have my, my husband's little notebook. At four o'clock in the morning, um, I was having contractions. Uh, at 4.06, I had another one. Uh, they were a minute apart. Then they got to be 40 seconds apart. At 4.16, it was 40 seconds apart. And then um, at 4.25, it was 28 seconds apart. And they were starting to hurt really bad. And so my husband was like, I'm going to get in the shower real quick. Okay. I call my dad, my mom, and my aunt. My dad met us at the hospital. Um, and by the time we got there, it was 6 a.m. by the time we got to the hospital. At 6 to 6.30, I was a 3 and a, a, a stretchy 3. That was like the most discouraging thing I could ever hear. If you've ever had a kid, whenever you get to the hospital and you your contractions hurt and you're just like, oh my god, is it close? And then they tell you what you, like, you're at a 3 or a 4. You're just like, are you serious? I have this much more to go. So it was, at that point, I didn't know what to expect. I could go quick. I didn't know. So we were at a stretchy 3. Well... That was at 6 o'clock in the morning. 20 minutes later, I was at a 4. And then by 8.30, I was a 6. And I had this mo the most amazing midwife. Um, I didn't plan on having a midwife. I, ha I have an OB for Keller. And absolutely, 100%, trust him, love him. Would never, ever have another doctor. I don't know what I'll do if he ever retires and I want to have another kid. Um, not that he's that old, but I absolutely loved him and it was on a Saturday morning. So I had, he was on call and that was the midwife and she's a young girl and she was new. And the first thing I said to her when she came in to check me was, you were the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Cause when I get nervous, I just like 
mouth diarrhea and she was she was amazing and I just loved her she helped me do stretches to help me um, Gracie was laying sideways and they really wanted her to be um, you know face down or whatever whenever they come out so she was sideways and they had me doing all these exercises and I had this ball between my legs and I was trying to like they had me squeeze her contraction and that was like the most excruciating pain I've ever been in and so at 8 30 a.m i was at six and doctor and they said dr color will be here for the birth and i was like oh like that means so much to me did they end up breaking all right baby so she doesn't it. it's oh, december 12th you're two days past your estimated due date okay. mom has quickly <laughs> moved along and is currently champing things out <laughs> say hi mom <laughs> Where are we at right now? We're at a six. At a six. And your head is so big it's blocking water <laughs> coming out. <laughs> go, go figure. <laughs> well, tell her you'll see us soon. I broke down that Grace Lee was born and she was eight pounds, 12 ounces, and 20 and three quarters of an inch long. So that was all my husband's notes that he had on Grace Lee. Um, my doctor. His birthday was that day and we didn't know it till the next day but my first daughter and my doctor had the same birthday and that's why he wanted to be there he also wanted to be there because he is an alumni of Arkansas and uh, my husband got his master's degree in Arkansas so throughout the whole pregnancy we felt really close to him and it was kind of like a running joke whenever he came in to deliver Gracely he wanted to play the Arkansas fight song and he was gonna wear his uh, crew neck with Arkansas on it so obviously any kid's birth is special but that was the reasoning why her birth was so special to us now what you guys really really want to know is um, like your water breaking did it hurt it sent me into a contraction it didn't hurt any worse you don't feel it It didn't hurt any worse than what uh, a contraction is you know like it sent me into one um, it is scary at first because they stick these uh, yarn looking things up there to pop the sack. You know, it, it wasn't uh, anything. Um, they do stick an IV in you just in case uh, they need fluid or whatever. That was annoying to me because I couldn't move around very well. I was attached to all these monitors. Um, I labored on a ball most of the time. I will tell you, every labor is different. With my second daughter, I could not labor on a ball. I wish I could have. I labored on a ball, and I they, they kept asking me after I gave birth, what if I had like a birth plan, and I was like, no, I just wanted to do no medicine. And they said, well, did you do like a hypnotist type? Did you study on that? And I was like, no, I don't even know what that is. Because the entire time I just closed my eyes and hummed it out and like held hands with my friends that were there and I promise after this I'll put some vodka in it. <laughs> Maybe not right after this. All right, ride this one. Shoulders up. second daughter I did not I screamed just put it over just put it over <laughs> bloody murder it was awful it was the most pain I've ever been in my life it was like someone was gutting me to be honest um, not to scare you, you will get through it and it is the most amazing thing. Birth is like my favorite, but they were completely different. So one person's story could be totally opposite of another. Um, I will tell you this, breathing, you need to be in the right mindset and a breathing, breathe through it, breathe through everything, close your eyes, breathe it out, hum it out, whatever you got to do. I promise you this, eventually it will be over and eventually you will be so 
glad that you didn't have the epidural because you get to feel and experience everything. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that it's the way to do it. I think people who get the epidural are the real hero because they don't have to go through it and they still get to give birth. I'm terrified of the needle. I'm terrified to have something put in my back. Feel, be in control. Let's say that I like to be in control. Kudos to every mom out there who gives birth. That's all I have to say about it. Um, the other thing that I recommend when giving birth is having a good support system. I had my husband there the entire time holding me. My husband needed a break. My best friends were there to take over. Also had a, my first daughter's birth was a 24 hour birth. I went into late, as you saw, as I told you earlier, 4 a.m. is when the traction started and I gave birth to Gracie at 4 o'clock. So it was a 12 hour long birth from contraction one to contraction a thousand. I don't even know how many I had. Second birth, again, we went to Steak and Shake and ate with my dad and stepmom and I had a strawberry shake, I had cheese fries, I had a cheeseburger and went home, wasn't feeling very good. I I've been very, very upset about not going into labor on my own. My uh, OB had to strip my membranes, which I didn't even feel because they were almost gone anyways. I was scared. He told me he was going to have to do that, and I was scared, but I didn't feel it. And he said, I give you four days. I went in on Monday, and he had me scheduled for an induction on Friday. But I went in on Monday morning. Uh, I woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, my oldest daughter was 18 months old, 19 months, 20 months, sorry, 20 months old, 20 months apart. She was 20 months old. I was trying to get her dressed because I knew something wasn't right and I had to take her to her 18-month um, shop appointment. And I was like, man, I just don't feel right. So I called and canceled. And uh, this is at 7. I called my mom and said, Mom, I think you, and I'll insert the video here. Hey, Charlie. This is Mom. It is like 8.15. And we are starting to have contractions. It woke me up about 7.30. They're really starting to stick, so we thought that um, my face looks so buffy. Um, Grandma is on her way over, yo-yo, to um, get Gracely dressed. And then we're just gonna go drive around because I don't want to be in Lovington when this happens because it's gonna go pretty quick. So um, yeah, that's where we're at right now. They're about five to eight minutes apart, just depends. Some are hard, hard, hard. Some are okay and then they ease up so we'll just see what happens um this is how i'm gonna wear my hair for birth so hopefully that's okay here i am trying to look pretty but hopefully we will meet you today sometime bye i called my mom and said hey i'm in pain i think you need to come take me to the hospital it's an, again 30 minute drive so she rushed over, got me, and on our way to the hospital, I felt like I was about to give birth in the car. I was pushing, I was, it was hurting, I was like, this is way worse than with my first one, like, completely different, and we got to the hospital at 8.26, and 8.29, we got in the room, they checked me at 9 o'clock, and I was at 8.7. Hi, Mom. We just got our room. We're at a seven. We're at a seven. Got checked at the doctor oh. Friday. We're at a three. Uh, and now we're at a seven. Oh, it hurts so bad. Do you want to record anything else for you? Oh. oh. I drove 75 all the way here. Um, contraction started around 7.30 that morning. They called Keller in at uh, I was at 7 to 8 centimeter. This was at 11.41. So I was on 8 centimeter at 11.41. Um, by noon, I was still at 8, 8 and a half. Nothing was happening. Contractions were rough. They were at the top of, uh, right on top of each other, one after another after another. I did not get a break whatsoever. Um, I started pushing. It doesn't say a time, but it was 16 minutes before I had her. So it was 10 till 1. Um, I started pushing and she was born at 106. I will tell you this, I could not get comfortable. I was on all fours at one point. I was on the ball in the beginning. I was laying in the bed. I could not find a spot that felt good. 
Um, she was so big and we didn't know it. And two weeks before, I thought I had peed my pants, but I was unsure. I didn't feel like I peed my pants. I knew what that felt like before in the middle of the night when being preg so pregnant. Um, and I was, yeah, it was two weeks before I gave birth. And I went, her due date was August 3rd. I gave birth on the 7th. So I went four days over. Um, but it wasn't, come to find out, I didn't pee. My doctors thought I, it was just pee again because I still, you know, her, everything sounded good. It wasn't. It was, I was leaking amniotic fluid because whenever he went to go, um, and this is why it hurt so bad, my birth, when he went to go, break my water there's no water that came out it was a dry birth and so she came when she came out it the whole birth hurt when she came out it did i didn't push very long i pushed an hour with my first birth with charlie my second one i only pushed for um 16 minutes and it was not i felt like i pushed maybe five times because i honest to god she came out that fast she came out and she wasn't breathing. Um, I all I kept remember was they sucked her out a little bit and then put her on my chest and I was like, breathe, baby, breathe. Like all the pictures, I wasn't smiling or anything. So I was just like, come on, cry. I want to hear you cry. I want to hear you cry. Well, she had to be on oxygen. I didn't get to hold her for the first first thirty minutes because she was so blue and had to be on oxygen and they just stick something down for her to get all the gunk out. She was fine. Everything was fine. Um, she was a little bruised because she came out pretty quick, but not anything terrible. Um, but yeah, other than that, she was 9 pounds, 9 ounces compared to my first one that was 8 to 12. So she was quite a bit bigger and it hurt, but I'm here to tell you girls, you can do it. Ladies, you can do this. I know you can. If I can, you can. Breathe through it. Focus on having a healthy birth. Focus on just thinking positively about it. Don't, I know it's, you're going to have nerves, but just think, I can do it. Everything's going to be great. We're going to get through it. Especially if you don't know what you're expecting, if it's your first time, just go into it with just positive thinking. That's the, that's the one thing I have to say is positive thinking got me through the first one. And we didn't know what she was. We didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. With Charlie, I knew it was a girl and I knew I just wanted her out of me. I was overly yeah. pregnant. If we ever do have another baby, we will not find out the sex, and I think that will have a huge play in when it comes time to give birth because there's so much excitement with that. That's it. I'm going to post some more clips of um, after having her and um, just kind of like tie this video up. I hope that you guys enjoy this. I hope it helps. I know it's a pretty quick summary of my birth. Births. Um, but yeah, so I hope this helps. Leave a comment below if it did or if you have any questions or if you just want to share your birth story. I love hearing birth stories. I think they're the most amazing thing ever. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. Love you. Make sure you subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and let's be friends. Thanks guys. Bye.
<laughs> then she's huge. Well, tell us a little about her. Yeah, she's 9'9", 21 inches long, born at 106. She hurt. I tore her a little bit, but she's doing pretty good. They're checking her oxygen, I think. Yeah. A lot. She has lots of hair. She looks just like Grace Lee. And we're 130 and already feeding. Look at her arm. She's like a little muscle man. <laughs> she barely fits in the size of Yeah, diapers. barely fits in newborn diapers. I think we're pretty happy, huh, Mom? Yeah. <laughs> Grace is going to be so in love.